Hey guys, how are we doing? Welcome to another gear review. Today we're going to be looking at this, the RAB Neutrino Endurance 400 sleeping bag. Let's get down to it. Oh man, it was a little bit hot in there. It is a very, very sunny day. I'm pretty stoked to be out. My camp's over there. I've arrived back from my walk early and so I thought I'd use this opportunity to have a chat, as I mentioned, about this. The RAB Neutrino Endurance 400 sleeping bag. Part of the endurance range, you've got the 200, 400, 800 in the sleeping bags. You've got various jackets and stuff as well. So this whole series is designed for lightweight alpinism, mountaineering and winter conditions. You're bivvying on a mountain ledge in horrendous storms. That's what this stuff is designed for. But if I'm honest, if you find a piece of kit that works for you, use it however you want. I use this predominantly when I'm backpacking because it's got an awesome weight to insulation ratio which we'll get into in a minute. So that's what I thought we would do today is we'd have a chat about the temperature limits, we'd have a chat about the fabrics, the features, and leave you to make your own conclusion as to whether this is the sleeping bag for you. So let's begin. This bag retails at 345 pounds. So it's kind of a middle price ranged bag in terms of sleeping bag costs. Uh, I would really, really encourage you to shop around. You can always, always get things cheaper. I got this for 190 pounds second hand, which I thought was not a bad deal given the fact it's not really being used. Um, but you can get them cheaper still if you're looking for codes just keep an eye on, on sales if you find a sleeping bag that works for you definitely hold on until you can get it <laughs> so you can get it cheaper it's quite rare you have to pay full price so 345 pounds ouch let's move on from that temperature limits then so we have temperature limits for all of our sleeping bags so we get the comfort the limit and the extreme these are tested using a standardized method so that you can compare sleeping bags and be like okay this has got that limit this has got that limit this is the difference between the sleeping bags but don't take these as absolute fact because everybody sleeps slightly differently i sleep quite warm friends sleep quite cold um, so yes they're they're good for sleeping bag comparisons but they're not absolute fact if you'd like to know more about the actual temperature limits and how they measure them do have a look on the rab website they've got loads of detail on there i think it's awesome that they share all of that so you can find out exactly what you're buying and why you're buying it so the temperature limits for this bag then you've got the comfort at more at 1.5 degrees celsius spit it out <laughs> you've got the limit at minus four degrees celsius and the absolute extreme is minus 21 degrees celsius so that's where an adult man is supposed to be able to survive curled up in a ball for six hours without getting hypothermia so hopefully we won't get to that stage <laughs> but those are the temperature limits of this bag again check out the rabbit website more information about those on there the actual fabrics then let's start with the gray the outside this is pertex endurance fabric this is a wrap fabric it's designed for maximum breathability it's slightly water resistant so any condensation in your tent should bead off sometimes it might be worth using this with a bivy it's totally up to you but it should bead off uh, it's downproof so the down is not going to come out which is great because that's going to prolong the lifespan of the sleeping bag and it's also windproof as well so that's the pertex endurance the inner fabric then this beautiful vibrant blue full of sticks and stuff <laughs> This is Pertex Quantum fabric. So again, pretty much the same qualities as the outer fabric, um, but it's really just designed for absolute maximum insulation to weight ratio. So it's super lightweight and it's uh, breathable and keeps you warm, which is very useful. Having talked about the, the weight then, this sleeping bag itself at the regular length, weighs 890 grams so certainly not the lightest out there but definitely not the heaviest given the pack size and we'll have a look at that in a minute um, so yeah 890 grams for this sleeping bag let's have a look at the actual features then so as we can see or as we saw earlier when i was sweating it out in the sleeping bag it's uh it's a mummy it's a standard mummy design so we've got the hood over the head it's quite close fitting around the body we've got the toe box or an angled toe box on the bottom there to ensure you sleep well I don't, I don't necessarily understand quite the point in the angle toe box, but they boast about it, so it must be important. <laughs> and then we've got the hood, which goes over your head. The hood is adjustable with a little toggle here, so you can pull that right nice and tight to make sure you're staying warm in the night. And then we also have a sort of shoulder or an internal baffle that goes around the shoulders to maintain the heat around your body. Some people just don't like having the hood over their head, which is absolutely fine. And at least you can keep all that heat trapped inside close to your body, close to your internal organs by doing up this toggle also on the inside since we're inside we've got a nice little zip here it's just about big enough to fit a mobile phone or a gps or some camera batteries not all at once i must say but it's still quite useful to have that for me i tend to keep my phone and camera batteries in there uh, especially on a colder night just to a protect them from condensation but also just to keep them warm and help prolong the battery life there 
The actual zip of the sleeping bag is a YKK zip, so it's just designed to um, to last effectively. You can buy the sleeping bag with it on the right or the left, totally up to you, depending on your preference. I actually don't ever use the zip, I just slide in and out of the sleeping bag, unless I really want to open it out and just use it as a blanket, but that's not possible since the zip doesn't go all the way down, it's kind of a three quarter length zip. The zip is a double zip, so you can open it from the bottom as with the top just to get some ventilation there, which is great given the fact this is a very warm sleeping bag and say I'm going to use this throughout the year probably, there's going to be nights that I'm quite warm. <laughs> you've got a little velcro thing on the top just to keep the zip in place, which is very handy. And on the inside we've got this, what I'm just going to call a storm baffle or a little baffle there just to protect the zip and just to really keep that heat in again you've got the anti-snagging web tape there which is this gray stuff again just to stop it the zip snagging it's the most frustrating thing when it gets caught that's just not going to happen on the sleeping bag unless something goes seriously wrong the actual down within the sleeping bag i have been waiting a while to say this because this is something i'm very passionate about the down is certified european down so it's traceable you can trace it right the way back to the farm that the down has come from and it's rds so it's responsible down standard down and basically what this means is the the farm that this down has come from has been using standard practices to ensure sustainability to ensure uh, a certain standard of welfare for the geese to ensure that they're not being used and abused we'll have a, a nice system of geese going on that having a good lifestyle a good lifestyle yeah um, which for me is something I'm very passionate about because what I don't feel like we should be doing as outdoor people is buying equipment to the detriment of the world that we play in. I believe we should be responsible for the animals and the natural world around us, whether they're farmed or not. Um, this equipment should not be harming animals and it should not be harming the natural world that we play in. So I'm really pleased that Rab is on board with that, that this is RDS certified traceable European down and even better is hand stuffed into this sleeping bag by hand in Derbyshire um, every single sleeping bag that Rab has got that is downfilled is hand filled, is measured and you just know that the care has gone into this and actually it makes you feel when you buy this that Rab care about you, they care about what you're doing, what you're passionate about because they've done this by hand, they've weighed every single section that has been filled in to ensure it exactly right and we're not going to go out there and end up in trouble with hypothermia because this hasn't been filled right because it's been done by a machine it's been done by hand and it's been done with care so that's a big thumbs up from me to rab uh, as with many outdoor companies they're getting on board this more and more so that's really great so that's just the information this is an 800 fill bag it is down it is certified i'm happy about that <laughs> So the final thing then, to be honest, sleeping bags are quite simple really, aren't they? There's not that much to talk about. Um, <laughs> all of the RAB sleeping bags come with a kind of bigger fabric white bag with a RAB branding on that you can put this in when you're storing it so it's maintaining that loft. I obviously don't have that on me right now because my camp's just over there and I would have no reason to carry that whilst I'm out and about on the trail. But what I do have is this, which is the stuff sack and the dry bag. They're incorporated, we can see we've got the kind of stuff sack here and then it rolls up over the top as the dry bag, which is really great because we've talked about how this is water resistant, it's not water proof. <laughs> Even though the, dine is, the, the down is hydrophobic, um, you just don't want to get down wet. You want to protect it as much as you can. So we've got this integrated sleeping bag, stuff sack, um, or this dry sack, stuff sack, spit it out. <laughs> um, and so what I thought we'd do is we just pop it in here and then we just run through a little conclusion and leave you to make your own decisions as to whether this is the sleeping bag for you. So here's the fun part, let's get stuffing. There we go, that took a little bit longer than normal. So I've just pulled the toggle on the internal stuff sack and then the dry bag comes out over the top. Make sure that rolls up and is protecting the sleeping bag. There we go. And that is it. The Rab Neutrino Endurance Sleeping Bag 400. This is the pack size. That's gonna go back in my backpack. I'm gonna pack up my camp and begin my journey for the rest of the day. So guys, if you have anything else you'd like to add about the sleeping bag, if you've got your own review, if you feel like there's anything I've missed because I'm only human after all, then please, please comment below. Let's share everything we have to share and help each other out with buying kit because it's such a daunting minefield of stuff. Let's be as clear as we can in helping people out. And folks, until next time, enjoy your adventures and stay wild. <laughs>